We have breaking news. A new GDP report is out this morning showing the U.S. economy grew a solid but slightly disappointing 2.8 percent annual. Uh, the report credits consumer spending for the boost. Chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors, Jared Bernstein, joins me now for more on this. Jared, thanks so much for coming on. What's your reaction to these new numbers? I think these numbers are just a reminder of how far we've come in this economy since this president took office. In the midst of a downturn, the largest that we've seen since the Great Depression, to the strongest economy in the world. 2.8% uh, GDP growth in the third quarter is well above uh, the trend, uh, the underlying trend of GDP growth. And, and recent reports have, uh, have also been there. Uh, this president has posted uh, an annualized growth rate of over 3%. Uh, that puts him way high up in the rankings. 16 million jobs, unemployment rate uh, at a 50-year low on average, and now rising wages and incomes as inflation eases. We have more work to do to build on this progress, particularly around cutting costs, but we are moving solidly in the right direction. The Federal Reserve uh, cut interest rates last month for the first time in four years. So why don't Americans feel like the economy is improving? Well, we actually saw in October the largest spike, the largest jump up in consumer confidence in three and a half years. Now, that's one month I try not to over torque on any monthly or quarterly result. But that trend is also moving in the right direction. And I think one of the reasons for that is that real incomes are up $4,000 since this president took office. The gas price this morning was $3.13, below $3 a gallon in 20 states. That is helping consumers with real breathing room. And you saw that in this report with a very strong above expectations consumer spending number of 3.7%. Again, none of that undermines the urgency of our continuing to lower costs in health care, in child care, in prescription drugs. And we will push that agenda against those who would repeal it because we need to build on the progress that we're making. Jared, what about things like grocery prices where we often hear the term sticky inflation? That seems to be where it's so evident. Right. I think grocery prices are an example where inflation has come way down. We had double-digit inflation in grocery prices a year and a half ago. Now we're looking at numbers that are around 1%. But people still remember what things used to cost. And that's why, again, our agenda to reduce industrial concentration, for example, in the meatpacking industry, to have more competition, put downward pressure on prices, is as urgent as ever. But let's not forget the income or wage side of the agenda. It actually takes the same amount of work now to buy a bag of groceries as it did before the pandemic and that's because as inflation has gone up paychecks have gone up more none of that uh, uh, obviates the work we have to do but again uh, the trend is our friend in those areas so Jared what does a stronger economy mean for the Fed and interest rates going forward well, I'm pretty careful not to get into their knitting. We respect Fed independence. I think what they've told us is uh, steady as she goes. If you look at their plot for uh, cutting rates, uh, they're on a trajectory that um, I think we should all uh, listen to them and believe what they say. So uh, the strong economy, this backdrop uh, is, uh, from our perspective, uh, helping families at the kitchen table. That's what matters most to this president and vice president. And the October jobs report will be released on Friday. It's expected to be one of the most distorted in years after a month of hurricanes and worker strikes. So what's your message to voters who will see this jobs report as they prepare to head to the polls? To look at the trend and to never overemphasize one month's report, particularly when that report is, and I'm very glad you brought this up. This is actually very important news. We have two sources of distortion in that report, both of which are expected to lower the count of payrolls. One is there are over 40,000 striking workers, uh, and that's baked in to the number. The other is uh, uh, the hurricanes, and we, we can't tell what that impact will be till we see it. But it's a good reason to remember that in this report, the signal will be dampened, the noise will be elevated. To look at the underlying trend, there we have very strong job growth, a solid labor market, historically low unemployment, helping to generate real wage gains, what we saw in this GDP report that's supporting strong consumer spending. That's 70% of our economy. If we have the tailwind of this job market behind the American consumer, we expect these growth rates to persist.
I also want to talk about a comment from President Biden that's getting a lot of backlash from Republicans today. In an interview, the president was reacting to the comments made by a comedian at Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden, where the comedian called Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. I want to play that moment from the president for you in response. Well, let me tell you something. I don't, I, I don't know the Puerto Rican that, that I know, or Puerto Rico where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization of seen as unconscionable, and it's un-American. The president later tweeted, I refer to the hateful rhetoric about Puerto Rico spewed by Trump supporters at his Madison Square Garden rally as garbage, which is the only word I can think of to describe it. His demonization of Latinos is unconscionable. That's all I have to say. The comments at the rally don't reflect who we are as a nation. Now, the Trump campaign is comparing this to 2016 when then-candidate Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters a basket of deplorables. What's your response to that? We have a team of people from our communication staff working on uh, this issue, and it's always much better to go to them uh, for anything like this. I don't wade into electoral politics. I'm frankly uh, not allowed to, and I don't do so, and I won't do so here. What I can do is make comparisons between administrations and their economic record. And here you have uh, the prior administration left office uh, with a manufacturing recession. This president has presided over strong manufacturing job growth and the building of hundreds of, th of actually thousands of manufacturing facilities in this country that will soon be up and running, generating clean energy products and computer chips. If you want to talk about GDP growth, the topic of our discussion today, it's averaged about 3%, a little bit north of that under President Biden. Under the prior administration, it was less than 2%. Uh, so we're happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, when it comes to uh, economic comparisons and policies uh, in terms of uh, that will lift people in their economic futures. But when it comes to the kind of political issues you've raised, there are other folks here who can talk about that. White House Council of Economic Advisors Chair Jared Bernstein. Jared, thank you. My pleasure.